Hi, I'm Deborah Vogel, the creator of Essential Anatomy, a multimedia course for dancers and dance teachers. I've put together short sample clips from each of the 10 units to share with you. If you have questions or would like more information about Essential Anatomy, please go to www.thebodyseries.com. We'll start from, with a clip from the vocabulary unit. Now, tendons connect muscle to bone and are slightly elastic, meaning they will keep their elasticity as long as the stress is of short duration. Tendinitis is a good example of what happens when you put a continual force on a tendon. In simple terms, the muscle is where all the contracting should happen, but sometimes the muscle becomes either overly tight uh, because of a growth spurt, we know that bones grow faster than muscles, or there's an imbalance between how much you're contracting it versus stretching it. For example, having Achilles tendonitis occur because the calf muscles get so tight that they begin to pull on the tendon, creating tears and inflammation. If the pull gets too great, the tendon may even rupture, so it's really important to keep the muscles in good tone. Muscles consist of contractile fibers and fascia. Here's a great way to train your students on using their core support to stabilize. Have them start in the quadruped position with a neutral spine. In fact, the back muscle should be soft. Then without shifting, first lift one hand, then the other, then lift a leg, and then the other, and the hardest one, lift both the hand and diagonal leg at the same time. How high you can lift your knee to the front, side, or back depends on your structure, as well as your muscular flexibility and strength. It's good to note that if your knee is bent, you can lift the thigh about 120 degrees to the front, above parallel to the ground. But if your leg is straight, the femur can lift to about 80 degrees without the pelvis tipping. For some dancers with tight hamstrings, they may have even less flexion before the pelvis shifts and the lower back rounds slightly. This means that while it is good to teach dancers to have the image of keeping their pelvis perfectly square while doing a batma or a developé, realistically there will be movement of the pelvis. The bones that make up the knee are the femur, the tibia, and the patella, also known as the kneecap. The femur is the long bone and its rounded lower edges are the medial and lateral condyles that rest on the top of the tibia, which is commonly called the shin bone. While the tibia is shaped in a concave way and the condyles of the femur are shaped convexly, it's easy to see that the ligaments and muscles are going to have to have an important role in the stability of this joint. It is not like the ball and socket joint of the hip, which has much more structural security. To finish identifying the bony aspects of the knee, is an extra piece of bone that sometimes gets caught in the joint when doing plantar flexion, such as a releve or being up on point. This is considered a posterior ankle impingement problem. Pain will be felt in the back of the ankle and the dancer will see a visible difference between their two feet when pointing. An x-ray is necessary to confirm the diagnosis. More men than women are diagnosed with anterior compartment impingement problems. As the tibia comes in contact with the talus, the repetition can cause irritated tissue and ultimately small bone spurs. With anterior impingement syndrome, the dancer will complain of dull, aching, chronic anterior ankle pain that is exacerbated with dorsiflexion and they'll feel a decrease in the depth of their demi-plie. An x-ray again is necessary to confirm this diagnosis. The most To become more acquainted with evaluating the spine, have a student round forward about halfway to the ground. They can bend their knees if they have tight hamstrings. An ideal spine shape is a C-curve. So first look from the side and see if there are any flattened areas of the spine. Gently run your fingers along the spinous processes, after asking permission, of course. Those are the bumps that indicate the placement of each vertebra. 
Do you lose any of the bumps as you run your fingers across? Can you only feel muscle at certain areas? From the side, does the back look more like a question mark rather than a C-curve? That would indicate some tightness in the lower back area. Now most people imagine a two-part rhythm to breathing, inhalation and then exhalation. But actually it has three components, inhalation, pause, exhalation, and then another pause. The duration of the pause is significant. If we interfere with the length of the breathing pause, shortening it even slightly, we find ourselves feeling rushed or pressured. Let's take a moment to experience this by inhaling and exhaling without any slowing down. Inhale, then exhale right back into the inhale, then right back out to the exhale. It doesn't take but a few breaths to feel your whole body respond by feeling a bit anxious. That is why a slow, centered breath is used across the cultures as a path to calm balance. The pause has a double purpose, a resting from the effort of the inhalation and a rallying of the energy needed for the next inhalation. Don't try to make the pause willfully. Because breathing is an involuntary process, you could never intentionally make the pause just right. Its duration varies as your breathing changes, adjusting to what's happening in your life. Simply becoming aware of the pause without trying to change it often will deepen your breath. Keeping a balance between the front and back of the shoulder will help keep the shoulder blades from winging. On the next clip, you'll see some weakness around the left scapula, which will wing slightly. And then I'll show you two different ways to strengthen the upper middle back muscles. Watch Sarah's left scapula as she protracts and retracts the scapula. You'll see it's winging, showing some weakness of the muscles around that area. You can put a weight in your hand or simply lift the elbow up towards the ceiling, which is strengthening the rhomboids. Here she's in the sphinx position and slowly pressing up, lengthening the spine and bringing her head towards the ceiling. The way we like to stand as we talk to somebody, whether it's more on one leg or in a wide stance position or the forward slump of our head that's created by working long hours at the computer, all these habits will influence the muscle and the fascia. Let's explore this some. I'd like you to cross your arms across your chest. Look and see which arm is under and which arm is on top. Now try crossing them with the other arm on top. Notice how weird this is, or maybe you even had trouble figuring out how to do that. That's because of the thousands of times you've crossed your arms in the same way, and that's molded the fascia, or the connective tissue, in a specific pattern based on that habit. What's so important about fascia and stretching is understanding that there may be tightness in a different area of the body that is influencing your intended stretching area. Remember the example from the vocabulary unit where I talked about someone with tight hamstrings who increased their functional flexibility by rolling on the pinky ball? That is an example of tightness elsewhere along the fascia line influencing how well the hamstrings are functioning. Cues. So how does someone learn movement? The path of movement starts with a thought or idea, which is sent through the body by the nervous system to tell the muscles to contract and create movement. Learning starts in the brain and goes through the nervous system to the muscles to create a response. If there's a problem anywhere above the bone, like a spinal cord injury, brain injury, or joint injury, etc., you will have trouble with your movement. Now, we are creatures of habit. When we do something over and over again, we build chemical and neurological associations and patterns in the brain. If we want to change a pattern, we have to go back to the cortical or brain level. 
Let's say you want to change how you rise into Relevate. Go to thebodyseries.com for more info.